Hi everyone, my name is Alan and I'm going to be sharing with you the experiment that I'm currently doing which is on a home thermostat. Uh, I know that that really has little to do with robotics but it has a lot to do with the I2C um, communication protocol which the NXT actually uses. And I'm having a great deal of fun uh, using the High Technic Experimenters Kit. This one, however, is going to be a little different than the kind of experiments that are included with the kit. In the kit, typically what would happen is we would use only the A0, uh, the analog zero input. But we're going to make a bit of a difference here. We're going to use two of the analog inputs, A0 and A1. As in one of the experiments, we're going to use A0 to sense the voltage drop across the temperature sensor. So that is going to give a, the computer a reading of the actual temperature in the room. But we're going to do something a little bit different. We're also going to add in a potentiometer. That potentiometer is going to give us the ability to uh, measure the desired sense, uh, the desired temperature. So if you like, the potentiometer is going to act like the thermostatic dial and we're going to feed that voltage drop into analog one. What's going to happen is the NXT, the computer, is going to read both of those analog inputs and it's going to make a comparison. Another change that I've made is that instead of just having the one LED, I'm going to have two LEDs, a red one and a green one. The convention that I'm going to use is that if the red uh, LED is on by itself, that means that the actual temperature is too high, or it's higher than the setting temperature. If the green LED is on by itself, then that means that the temperature in some sense is good. That is, the actual temperature is less than the setting temperature. And to make things just a little bit different, if both the red and the green LEDs are on, then that means that the two temperatures are equal, the setting temperature and also the actual temperature being written, uh, the actual temperature that's being used. So uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go over and show you uh, what are the parts that you're going to need in order to do this particular experiment and then show you how to wire it up. In another video coming out later, I'm going to go through the actual program that you have to put onto the NXT to actually run your home thermostat. Okay, let's put the circuit together. You're going to need to have the high technic sensor board as well as the prototyping board. And you're going to want to put the prototyping board right up against the edge. That way all of the posts are in the proper position and they're going to be in correspondence with my position. If you put the board this way, then it's going to make it a lot easier for you to follow the instructions. We're going to need some parts as well. In terms of those parts, you're going to need two LEDs, a green one and a red one. In terms of resistors, you're going to need three of them. Two of them are going to be the 220 ohm type, and the third one is going to be the 10K ohm type. We're going to need to have a potentiometer and the potentiometer is going to be used to measure the desired temperature setting. There's also a yellow part here, a round yellow part on the potentiometer and a Phillips screwdriver will fit in that. And that really is the only convenient way of turning the potentiometer. So it's a good idea to also have a Phillips screwdriver handy so that you can change the potentiometer setting. Obviously, we're going to want to have the temperature sensor itself so that we can sense the temperature. Unfortunately, the temperature sensor is confusingly similar to the transistor, but there is writing on the flat side that you can read to determine whether you have the transistor or whether you actually have uh, the temperature sensor. However, that writing is pretty small, so you might want to consider also having this magnifying glass. A magnifying glass is not only going to help you read the writing on the temperature sensor and the transistor, 
but it's also going to help you make the correct connections on the prototyping board. You're also going to need to have the capacitor which comes with the kit. You have here also you're going to need two red jumpers. You're going to need to have two yellow jumpers. You're going to want to have two orange jumpers ready. And finally, one green jumper. And one of the first things that we want to do with the sensor board is start making all the connections for ground. Now, ground is the last pin right here on the green board. And so what I want to do is I'm going to put in an orange jumper which is aligned horizontally with ground and that way this entire row of holes is now connected to ground. I'm also going to put in a yellow jumper which is going to connect across here. And what that is going to do is it's going to cause this entire column of holes to be similarly connected to ground. Now, what I want to do is I want to start with the potentiometer first. I'm going to work starting at the top of the board and I'm going to slowly work my way down. I'm doing it that way so that it's visually easier for you. If I start putting components here at the bottom part of the prototyping board, it's going to be harder for you to see the uh, components at the top part of the prototyping board. Now, what I want to do is I want to have a voltage supply, the 3 volt voltage supply, which is the top pin, and I'm going to put the green jumper cable in so as to make that particular row available for power and then I'm going to put the orange jumper in so as to span the gully between the two so that now these holes similarly have uh, the power. Now I'm going to take the potentiometer and fortunately its connectors are already spaced properly and I'm going to put the connectors in in such a way that the extreme right or the extreme top lead is connected to power and this one here at the bottom is approximately it's at this row two rows down and then we also have the middle row what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground this connector that is the bottom connector of the potentiometer by putting in this yellow jumper remember that this yellow jumper connected everything to ground so that's why I get the grounding effect because all of these in this row are connected together now I'm going to take a red jumper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the red jumper into this middle part so as to make a connection with the middle connection and then I am going to make the connection with A1. And that's the whole secret of this particular circuit. A1 is going to be sensing the voltage drop across the potentiometer. And so that's it in terms of hooking in the potentiometer. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to put in the temperature sensor turns out that that doesn't take very long at all. One of the things that we want to do is we want to take the resistor, let me move out these parts, we want to take the, the resistor which is of the uh, 10K type and what we want to do is we want to span the gully with it 
and we want to insert it in the row just above where we have the orange jumper. We also want to insert the capacitor and we want to insert the capacitor in such a way that it is connecting across both the A1, or pardon me, the A0, and the ground. And it was just a little tight getting in there, but that's good. We've got a good connection. And finally, I want to put in the temperature sensor. And the temperature sensor should be put in so that the flat side faces towards the green board. The connection that's at the bottom of your screen will be connected with ground. This one here will be connected with the same row that the resistor is on. And this final lead, the one at the top of your screen, it's going to end up receiving some power and it just slips in there quite nicely like that. To deliver the power to the larger pin I'm going to put in the red jumper here and connect it across to the 3 volts supply. There it is. Okay, the last step in the assembly is to put in the LEDs. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the first resistor and we're going to put it in in such a way that it spans the gully on the row which is B1. And I've just put it in. And we want to put the other resistor in in such a way that it spans the gully on B4. Now you might wonder, well, what is so magical about B1 and B4? Uh, nothing in particular except that B1 and B4 are the binary pans that are going to be recognized by the computer program. And it just, they're a little tight fitting. There we go. And they're both in. Then, finally, what we want to do is we want to put in the two LEDs. What you should do is just feel around the edge, and there should be a notch or a flat side. The notch should face away from the green board, and we want to put the green LED in such that it is lined up with the B1 and therefore it's lined up also with its resistor. We put the one lead that's on the notched side into the minus side so it's going to be grounded and then we put the other side so it's going to be connected to the 220 ohm resistor. We do the same thing for the red resistor. We check for the notch and we then slip it in. And with that, the circuit is done.